Let's take a wide knees child's pose. If you're not there already, bring the knees to the edges of your mat, your big toes together behind you, your hands straight in front of your shoulders so that you're pushing your hips back towards your heels. Taking those first deeper, better breaths. And wherever you're at, we're gonna begin on our feet. So just start to link your movement in the breath and come all the way up to a standing position. Come to the front of your mat. Just gonna reset the camera. Just to make sure we can get in your whole body. All right, looks like we're good to go. The sound of Om. Let's bring our hands together. Lower our chin. Take an inhale. Oh. Beautiful. Have a great practice. Now, lower the hands to the side. You can join the feet or put a little bit of space between the feet. I want you to feel the hard floor under the feet and engage your legs, create that first neurological connection. So lift up the kneecaps, hugging your leg bones with your leg muscles. Now keeping that connection in your legs, use that action to then bring the belly in or the navel in. Or if you bring your awareness at the back of the body, think of your sacrum or your tailbone going down. We call that neutral pelvis. And we wanna keep that neutral pelvis for the rest of our practice. Come up a little higher to those ribs just above your stomach, draw those in. Have your chin parallel to the floor. You're gazing straight forward. You can hear the sound of your breath. This is Sama Siti, our beginning point of all other standing poses. Staying active in your legs, inhale. Let's lift up through the arms, bring the palms together above the head. Exhale, folding down your legs, bring the hands to the floor. Then on the inhale, lift your chest and your chin up. Maybe the hands come up too. Then put your hands down so you can exhale back to plank and lower down to the floor, finding that neutral pelvis. Reset the foundation. Inhale, lift the shoulders up above the wrist bones. You can keep your arms bent or straight. And then exhale, press your hips back, lift up, and then stay in the downward dog. Opening the feet a little wider than our Samasiti. Maybe walking one leg, lifting the opposite hip. Or just simply being still. Still with the sound of breath. Breath is normally pretty quiet at this point in the practice. It takes time to wake up the power of the breath. After all, this is a breathing practice. I'm just going to move in and out of these positions with breath, observing its effect on the breathing. Now, wherever you are, bend your knees, look back at the hands, and inhale, step or jump between the thumbs, create that long lifted spine, engage your legs, exhale, fold down, let the head hang. 
Inhale, lift the spine, raise the arms along the way, keep the belly up and in. And exhale, release the arms back to the side of the body. Number two is just like that. Inhale, lift through the arms, look up at the hands. Exhale, forward bend down the front of the legs. And inhale, take a little back bend, lift up away from the knees. Use your hands to exhale the feet back, lowering with that neutral pelvis, or then reset, inhale. Lift the head, the shoulders, the upper body. Press into the palms. Exhale, lift up the back of the body. For one, spreading the fingers so you notice the air and the space between the fingers. Two, let's do that to the toes. Can you spread your toes apart like you can spread your fingers apart? Three, bringing a greater neurological connection to your arms and into your legs. Three, noticing all those sensations that come along with more life in the arms and legs. Four, taking one more deeper, better breath. And then finish your exhale with your knees bent. Look to where you're gonna hop or step. Inhale, hop, step there, little lift up. Exhale, fold into the legs. Inhale, follow the breath up. Lift the spine, raise the arms, even look up at the hands. And exhale, release the arms along the side of the body. Number three, with more sound, inhale, sweeping up the arms. More sound, exhaling down the front of the legs. A smooth inhale, lift through the chest and the chin. Plant palms, smooth exhale, down to chaturanga, your low plank, maybe a lower to the belly. Inhale, hear the sound when you lift. Exhale, hear the sound when you fold back. For one, keep producing the sound. Two, the sound is created by breathing through the nose and slightly constricting your throat. Three, then create the same sound whether you're inhaling or exhaling. Four, as you create the sound, expand from the inside out. And then when you exhale, you retract into the body. Now bend the knees, look forward. Inhale, jump to the feet, lengthen through the spine. Exhale the sound into the legs, follow the sound up. Inhale, rise, lifting, raise the arm, hands together. With sound, exhale, release. Let's do two more like that. Inhale, lift through the arms. Exhale, tilting the pelvis forward, hands down. Inhale, little lift up away from the legs. Hands down, exhale the feet back, lower, neutral pelvis. Inhale, lifting through the chest. Exhale, lifting up through the hips. One, breathing with that smooth sound. Two, purposely breathing into the ribs of the back body. Three, so the ribs just below the shoulder blades above the kidneys. Four, that no man's land in the back that's hard to touch or get with the hands. Take one more. And then finish with your knees bent. Look forward. Inhale, hop step. Little lift up. Exhale, fold into the legs. Inhale, come all the way back up, raise the arms. Exhale, release the arms. One more, just like that. Inhale, lift through the arms. Exhale, lower the arms, hands to the floor. Inhale, lift the spine, lengthen it out. Use the hands to exhale down with neutral pelvis. Inhale, lift up to back bend. Exhale, lift up to forward bend. Listening to the sound of breath. Two. Three. 
just counting, you breathe at your own pace. Four, take one more. And then link back to the moving, look forward. Inhale, back to the feet into that little lifted spine position. Exhale, you fold into the legs. Inhale, rise up, lift the spine, lift the arms, lift the chin, look up. And exhale, reconnect to our Samasiti. Let's do three Surya Namaskara B, bend your knees. Inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, fold down as you straighten your legs. Inhale, take that little lift up. Plant palms, exhale, step jump. Lower down, finding neutral pelvis. Inhale, lift through the upper body. Exhale, back to your down dog. Left foot turns out, your right foot takes a step forward. Inhale, raise through the arms, maybe look up at the hands. Exhale, hands down, step back to plank. Lower to low plank, reset. Inhale, take lift. Exhale, back to down dog. Turn the right foot out. Step your left foot forward. Long, smooth inhale, hear the sound. Exhale, hear the sound as you lower to chaturanga, maybe you lower to the belly. Inhale, hear the sound as you lift. Exhale, hear the sound as you fold back. For one, keep your eyes open, especially when you go upside down. And two, breathing with smooth sound, keeping yourself focused on those subtle sensations. Three, we become more subtle with the body by observing its subtle effects with the breath. Four, so back away with how hard physically you're working. Try to pay attention to something you've never noticed before. Now take one more deeper, better breath in and then finish with your exhale out. Look forward, inhale, jump forward, lift the chin, exhale, fold, lower the head. Bend your knees as you inhale, lift up your arms. Exhale, stand as you release the arms. Good, we're gonna do two more like that. Bend, inhale, lift through the arms. Exhale, press the thighs back as you fold down. Inhale, lift away from the knees. Hands down, exhale, jump and lower all in one smooth motion. Spread the fingers. Inhale, lift the shoulders. Exhale, lift your hips. As the left foot turns out, your right foot steps forward. Inhale, look to the hands as you join them above the head. Exhale, all the way down to Chaturanga Dandasana, your low plank position. Reset. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, fold back. As your right foot turns, inhale, you step into the left side and bring the hands together. Exhale, all the way back down to Chaturanga, pulling the hands and the toes together. Inhale, reach the head up. Exhale, reach the hips up, roll over the toes and stay. Listening to your breath for one. Two. Three. Four. And then wherever you're at about now, bend the knees, use your next inhale, jump, step, lift chin. Exhale, fold down, sit down as you inhale and lift up through the arms. Exhale, release the arms. Last one, bend the knees. Utkatasana, inhale. Uttanasana, exhale, hands down. Inhale, Urdhva, lift the face. Exhale, jump back, Chaturanga. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha. Exhale, Adho Mukha. Right side warrior, Vira Bhadrasana. Inhale. 
Lower down, Chaturanga, exhale. Urdhva Mukha, inhale, upward facing. Exhale, Adho Mukha, downward facing. Taking your left side, Vira Vajrasana, inhale. Lower down, exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha, upward facing. Exhale, Adho Mukha, downward facing. Breathing with a smooth sound for one. Two. Three. And four. And five. You know what you're doing. Follow your breath. Finish this Surya Namaskar B. Our first standing pose, inhale, separate your feet just a little wider than your down dog. Exhale, fold down low enough, you can hook your big toes. Take an inhale there, engage the thigh, lift the kneecap and exhale, fold your belly down your thigh, lengthen your chest down past your knees. Let the head hang loose from the shoulders. And keep working on that neurological link to your legs. Keep engaging, keep contracting so that you create gentle space at the back of the thigh. We're already at three. Deeper, better breaths, hearing that smooth sound for four. Five, on your next inhale, lift your chest and chin up. Exhale there. Inhale, slide your hands under the feet so your toes touch your wrist. Exhale, forward bend, back down. Pada Hastasana, your second set. One. Creating that internal heat through the sound of the breath. Two. Noticing how the breath is getting smoother as the practice is progressing. Three. The breathing practice. Become more subtle with the body. Four, take one more. And then on your next inhale, you lift your chest chin. You exhale there. Now remove the hands from your feet. Inhale, come into an upright position. And exhale back into Samasiti. First, turn to the right. So you turn to face the right side of your mat and separate your feet the length of one of your legs. Inhale, raise your arms parallel to the floor. You're gonna take your right foot, turn it to the back of the mat, and keep your left foot pointing at the side. Now on an exhale, you're gonna reach the right arm over the stable right leg, and when you can't reach any further, lower the right hand towards your right big toe. Raise your top hand above your top shoulder. Turn the gaze and look straight up at your top thumb. And for Utita Trikanasana, one, equally pressing down into both feet. Two, so the feeling is that you're lifting right out of the right side. Three, equally using both legs to create space along the sides of the ribcage. Four, hearing that better breath. Take one more. And then link your breath and the movement. Your next inhale would bring you up parallel to the floor with the arms. You'd switch your feet. And then you'd exhale and lengthen over the left leg. And you lower the left hand towards the left big toe. For one, we turn the gaze and we look back up. The gaze is the energy where it's taking us. So we're moving up and out of the position for three. And four, take one more of your breaths. 
And when you're finished, use your next inhale to come up. You're gonna take your left arm up and the right arm down, right? And you're gonna turn from the right side all the way around so you're facing now the back edge of the mat. And from there with an exhale, you just take a forward bend. So turn the hips to face the back of the mat before you go down. Hand is on the inside of the foot or the outer foot. And then you're gonna extend up through the right arm, reach the right fingertips to the ceiling. You're either just gonna look off to the side of the mat or you turn the gaze and you look all the way up at the hand in space. We're already at three. Same concept of regular triangle, equally pressing into both feet. Four, if the twist is coming through how you're using the arms. Take one more breath. And then you look down as you exhale. So you got your balance. Come up, inhale. Now just turn on the two feet. Let's face the front with the exhale. You got the right arm lifted, inhale. Then exhale, you take a forward bend down with the right hand. Lift up your left shoulder. Lift up your left arm for one. Focusing on the quality of the breath, two. Same sound, inhaling or exhaling. Three. Put a little more weight into that back heel. There it goes. Four, take one more. Look down with your exhale. Lift up with inhale. Step back to Sama Siti. Exhale, big toes together. Let's do that pair again, but by bending the front knee. So turn to the right. Take a wider step to the right side, raise the arms. Turn your right foot to the back of your mat. Bend the right knee. Reach towards and then lower the right arm to the right side of the right leg. There you go. And then extend the top arm. So you're making a long straight edge with your left arm and your left leg. For one. Uttita Parsva Kanasana. Two. Noticing its effect on the quality of your breath. Three. And four. Take one more. And you know what to do. On that next inhale, you'd come up and out of the right side. You would turn your right foot first to the side, your left foot second. Track the left knee over the left ankle by bending it. Lower the left arm to the left side of your left leg. And then reach the top right arm forward in space. So have much wider space between the feet. There we go. Already at two. Rotating the shoulder out from the ear, just like we would do in downward dog for three. After this, we do the twist in four, taking one more deeper, better breaths. And you'd use that next inhale to come up. Now to twist, you turn the two hips all the way around to face the back. Start with your right leg bent. Raise the left arm up in the air, inhale. And then take that arm on the exhale to the outside of the knee. If you just get there, you can do prayer hands or the hand is on the floor on the outside of the pinky toe. And then the top arm reaches out of the shoulder just like it did before for one. It means the top arm is reaching towards the back edge of the mat. There we go for two. Back edge of the mat, there it goes. Three. Try wiggling the back heel a little further away from you so we're creating that length of spine. Four, almost there. And five, finish the exhale. Come up with your next inhale. Turn back, face the front, exhale. With the two hips squared, raise the right arm, inhale. Use the back of the right arm, exhale, outside of the knee. One, Parvarita. Parsva Kanasana. Two. Can these breaths be even slower than the other side? Three. 
deepening the twist as you finish the exhales. And four, take one more. And then use your next inhale to come up by straightening the front leg. And exhale, big toes together. One more turn to the right, a 90 degree angle turn. Separate your feet the same distance you had before. Put your hands on your hips. Take an inhale here and exhale, fold down, hands to the floor. Take an inhale there, hands shoulder distance apart. And then exhale, lower the head to the floor. And if you notice your arms can bend, your hands walk back between the feet so that you have your wrist is underneath the elbows. Hands, shoulder distance apart, just like your downward dog. Fingers pointing forward, just like your toes. If I'm looking at you from my perspective, looking at your back, I see your shoulder and your elbow and your wrist all in a straight line. The use of your arms is helping the head come closer to the floor. We're at three. Four, five. Now on your next inhale, lift through the chest and chin. Exhale there. Inhale, come up. And exhale once you get there. Arms, inhale, parallel to the floor. Hands, exhale, take back to the hips. Inhale, keep that inward rotation of the legs so the feet are pointing straight. And then exhale, fold back down, head to the floor, keeping your hands right where you have them, which is fingers in the creases of the groin, thumbs at the back of the body. One, a straight leg is a straight leg, so keep that thigh active. Two, feel the gravity lengthening your spine down through the crown of the head. Three, as you hear the sound of breath. Four, you notice the ribs lifting and dropping with each breath. Take one more breath. And use your next inhale to come all the way up in one lift. Exhale once you're there. Arms inhale out. Exhale, bring your hands behind the back. Take an inhale there. Exhale, fold back down, head to the floor. And then bring the hands to the floor. Reach the hands away from the lower back. Literally try to inhale into the upper portions of the lungs. But when you exhale is when the hands can reach a little further away from the body. Already at three. And four. Take one more. Finish the exhale. And then come all the way back up with your next inhale. Exhale, the hands come to the hips. Take an inhale there. And then exhale, fold back down and hook the big toes. Keeping your chest and chin up, take an inhale. And then as you exhale, bend the elbows up, descend the head down to the floor. One. We're back to using the arms to help the spine lengthen towards the floor for two. So if you pull on the toes, move the elbows up in space and move the shoulders up away from your ears for three. Feel that muscle right under the armpit that's pulling the shoulder blade up towards your hip bones. Four, wherever you are, take one more breath. Finish the exhale. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale there, release the toes. Inhale, come all the way up. Turn to the front. Exhale, big toes together. Now let's take a moment here. We turn the palms to the back. We are gonna invert the hands. We're gonna wiggle them up towards the back of the skull. So the fingertips are pointing up to the head. We're gonna move the elbows back behind us to join the four corners of the palm. Once the hands are set, inhale, turn to the right and turn all the way around and face the back of the mat. 
Now use another inhale and then exhale, fold down the inside of the right leg. These would be the same legs as the twisted triangle. For one, push into the front foot so it keeps the back foot nice and heavy. For two, or in other words, keep as much weight as you can in the back foot as you're lengthening down towards the front foot. Three, reverse prayer behind the spine looks like this. This is prayer at the front. This is prayer at the back. All right, inhale, come up out of the right side. Turn back to face the front side. Inhale, your fingers are pointing up towards the skull. There we go, exhale, fold yourself back down. One. Last standing pose. Two. After this, we take a flow and everything else will be down on the floor. Three. Four, deeper, better breaths. Follow that next inhale to come up. Release the hands from reverse prayer. Exhale, big toes together. Inhale, root into your legs, lift up through your arms. Fold forward, exhale, hands to the floor. Inhale, take that little lift up. Plant palms, exhale, jump back, lower down with that neutral pelvis. Inhale, take lift. Exhale, folding back to down dog. Now look at your hands. Inhale, jump your big toes together and sit down onto the back of your heels. Maybe the heels come up or maybe you can keep the heels on the ground. Now put the left hand behind you for balance. Turn to face the left side of your mat and inhale, take the back side of your right arm to the outside of your left knee. Put your hands into a prayer position, push palm to palm, elbow to knee, so that the effect is that your left armpit is turning to the wall behind you. That same smooth count of five. Breathing life into those spinal muscles. Four, longer, deeper breaths. Three, two, take one more. When finished, inhale, look forward. Exhale, release that twist. Now put the right hand behind you, let's do the other side. Inhale, the back of your left arm outside of your right knee, hands to prayer, elbow to knee, palm to palm. The effect is now the right armpit is turning back. One, staying involved in the sensations of the breath. Two, three, Four, take one more. Finish the exhale, then inhale, look front. Exhale, release the twist. Now open your knees out. We're gonna use crow to jump back to your plank position. Open the knees out. Get the knees, not above the elbows, get your knees closer to the shoulders. Balance on the tips of the toes. You can just lift the feet, inhale, jump back, or you can hold it for a few breaths. It's up to you how much you want to hold it here. Either way, you're going to take a flow when you had enough. And we'll meet up in your downward dog once you get there. Now, when you get to down dog this time, inhale, jump through to a seated position. Exhale, straighten out your legs. Now we're gonna take our right leg into Varasana position. So you're gonna close the right knee and you're gonna put the right heel on the outside of your right hip. You're gonna point the right toes towards the wall behind you. 
Now, if you feel that closing the right knee is making you lean towards the left side, slide a block underneath your hips. If you feel you're good here, you can do one of two things. One, you can inhale and bring the hands to the foot and take a forward bend. Or in an upright position, you wanna try the second one, you're gonna bend the knee, so bring the foot in by bending the knee. Both hands to the foot. Inhale, straighten out the leg by lifting it. And then exhale, hold closer to the heel so you can point the toe like a gymnast would. So you might feel a little bit of stretch along the top of the foot or the ankle. So instead of the foot being flexed at 90 degrees, it's pointed for that count of five of Kranchasana. Four. If holding the ankle is too far, you can hold above the ankle. Three, you can do a little flow in between the two sides. And two. Now on that last exhale, bring your left leg down to the ground. Now just put the hands beside the knees and step or jump back to plank position. Plank position, you know what to do from there. Your low plank chaturanga, inhale, Urdhva Mukha Shwanasana, up dog. Exhale, Adho Mukha Shwanasana, downward dog. Inhale, jump back. Exhale, straight legs. Now lean slightly over to the right side so we can close now the left knee. Put the left hip on the outside. Have both legs pointing straight forward. You take the forward bend, you bring the hands forward or close, pull the foot in, raise the leg up, inhale. Hold the ankle, point the toes, exhale. One. You can also use a strap around the foot if, uh, if it gives you a better grip. Two, and then point. There it goes. Three. Four. Exhale, leg lowers. Hands beside the knees. Inhale, hop, step, jump, float, back to plank, low plank, take flow. Stop when you get to your down dog. Down dog, inhale into a push-up position. Pull the toes towards the hands, pull the hands towards the toes and exhale, lower down to the floor. Now straighten your arms, so the hands are at your hips now. Palm up, back of the hand down. Inner rotate your legs so your big toes touch and you'd move the heels out to the sides. Inhale, press the back of the hand into the floor. Lift up your face, your chest, your shoulders. And as you press the back of the hand down, lift the tops of the feet, the kneecaps and the thighs. In fact, lift as much of your body off the contact of the mat, except the hands that are pushing down and the heels that are rotating out. I'm gonna do two variations. We're already at three of the first one. Flip the hands the other way. You got it. Four. You're still up, still up, still up. And five, now take the hands on the floor, palm down halfway between the armpit and the hip for one. Push yourself forward versus up in space for two. Like you feel like you're sliding along the floor on your belly for three. Pulling those elbows back behind the shoulders. Four, take one more. And five, press the tops of the feet to the floor. Inhale, take your upward facing dog, Urdhva Mukha Shwanasana. Exhale, downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Shwanasana. Let's do a variation of the next one. Take an inhale here in down dog and exhale lower to your knees. Separate your feet, point your toes back and sit your bum down between your feet. Knees together, feet apart. 
If your bum doesn't come to the floor between the feet, then put a block underneath your two hips. Reverse prayer, like so. Count of five. Four. Three. Two. Oh, there we go. One. Now take the arms out in front. Put the right arm on top of the left arm and interlace the arms. So the elbows are up at the height of your shoulders and you move your hands away from the face. Another count of five. Three. Two. Exhale, release. Inhale, other side. After which we take flow. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Now walk your hands forward so they're on the floor. You come into a plank position. High plank to low plank, Chaturanga. You know what to do from there. Inhale back to plank. Keep the connection in your core by pulling the hands and the feet together. Exhale, come down onto the mat. Now bend your knees, bring your heels to your hips, reach back, grab the outsides of the ankles, bring the feet back together. Now inhale, press the feet away from you as the grip of your arms resists the work of your legs for Dhanurasana, for one. That means you're lifting up for two. That means your face and your chest and your shoulders and your thighs and your knees, everything is lifting up for three. Just when you can't lift any higher, you lift some more for four. Take one more and release when you exhale. Take vinyasa flow and come back to this exact position on your stomach. All the way back, same position on your belly. You just did one set of bow position, Dhanrasana. We're going to do it three sets now on the right side, on the left side, and the third set back on the belly. So you bend the knees, you bind the ankles, you rejoin the big toes. Inhale, you lift up into your bow position, and exhale, you'll roll over onto your right shoulder and right hip for one. Two, there it goes. Three, keep working the legs just like you would be on your belly. Four, five, use the inhale, roll back to your belly, use the exhale, get onto the other side. There it goes. One, press the feet away from you. Two, Three, four, five, third set, back on the belly, inhale to get there, one. If your legs are burning, means you're doing it right, two. Keep lifting the face, the chest, the shoulders will be over before you know it, three. Like all pain, it will eventually end, four. Take one more breath and release with your exhale. Plant your feet, then your hands. Take your flow.
Now from your downward facing dog, let's come back into Varasana. So lower the knees to the floor, separate your feet and sit your hips down between your feet. Now we're gonna take our right elbow and point it up to the ceiling. And we're gonna take the left elbow and point it down to the floor and bring the hands together behind the head. The hands are far and place a block, a block, a strap in the top hand and then grab the strap in the other hand and walk your hands closer together. For one, five count on both sides. Two. Three. Four. Wherever you're at, exhale, release. Inhale, other side, left elbow up, right elbow down. One. Two. Three. Four, take one more and then go back to the movement by taking a flow. Flow stop when you get to your down dog. From down dog, take an inhale and exhale lower to your knees. Downward dog, lower to the knees and then stand up on your knees. Put your hands in a prayer position at the front of your body. Now you're gonna keep your chin right where it is. So when we go back, the chin doesn't move. All you're gonna do is bend at the knee, take an inhale, and then exhale, lean back as far as you can. Go so far back that you feel like you're gonna drop, and then inhale, you come back up. Do it five times. Maybe each time you can go one centimeter lower. Test the strength of your legs. How far can you go back before the legs give out on you? Don't lift the chin, keep the chin down at your chest. That's what spikes your blood pressure. Just bend at the knee. So we don't bring your bum onto the heels. You just bend at the knee. There you go. Keep the chin attached to your collarbones. Do not look up at the ceiling. There we go. After five, you'll put your hands down and you'll take another flow and you will stop when you get to your downward dog. Down dog, inhale. Knees lower to the floor, exhale. Stand up on your knees, inhale. Now let's open out the knees, put a block between the knees. You can put it at its thin or its medium width. Stand up, you got it. Put it between the knees and then separate the feet and you're gonna put one between the feet. So you're gonna have, uh, you can make it a little bit wider. It's not gonna jam into your car. Now put your hands in prayer, just like you did before. Now, all you're gonna do is you're gonna bend at the knee. You're gonna lean back into the strength of your legs. And at that point where you feel like your legs are gonna give out, reach the hands back and put your hands onto your heels. So the two blocks are there to squeeze the block between the knees and, now allow, and nodding allow the feet to move apart. Now press your thighs forward, lift your chest up towards the ceiling above, and then lift your chin back away from the collarbones. Count of five, pressing your thighs forward in space like you're doing this against the wall, where you're pressing your thighs and the two hip bones into the wall. 
Back pains love to shorten the breath. Say we're at three. We're at four. Take one more of your breaths. Now remember, you're in a back bend. You want to come out of this back bend as evenly as you can. You release the hands at the same time. You come up onto the knees. You put your hands down. You step jump back to plank. And you take a flow. Now, when you get to your downward dog, we're going to hop into a squat position. So you're going to look at your hands, jump your feet to the where the pinky fingers are. And here's where you're going to do your bakasana crow. You're going to hold it for a count of five. So get the back of your arms underneath your knees, hands shoulder distance apart. Move your head way in front of the fingertips. Inhale, lift the heels up. If you haven't already, you can count, count to five. Just one set, count to 10, you wanna stay a little longer. When you have had enough, which is up to you, you jump out and you take another flow. After this flow, we're gonna come through to a seated position and we're gonna do a couple twists. Hop through. All right. Taking our left leg first into Varasana. Like we've done a few times already. So you got your left heel on the outside of your left hip. Left leg Varasana. There we go. Now you're gonna put your right leg into half lotus. So bring your heel in towards your groin or the foot up into half lotus. The right arm goes around the back like it's gonna hold on to the right foot. If the hand and, far, and hand and foot are far, you can use the belt. Use the belt to bind the foot. Your available left hand would come to this side of your right knee. Right knee's on this side. There it goes. Inhale, sit up as tall as you can. And exhale, use the two arms to turn your upper body towards the right side. Right there, there you go. That same smooth count of five. Four. A little flow in between. Three. Two. Now inhale, put the hands in front of you. And out of this position, exhale, step back to plank or lift up and jump back to plank. And you know what to do from there. Jump through to seated, exhale, straight legs. Take your right leg to Varasana. So right heel on the outside of your right hip other right foot. There you go. Take your left leg into half lotus or that semi half lotus. Help the left arm go as far around the back towards the foot. Inhale, take the outside of the left knee. Exhale, gazing back. For one. Two. Three. Four. Five. We take flow by inhale, putting the hands down in front. Exhale, hop, step, jump out. Take flow, return to seated position, and you will lie down on your back now. Not getting too comfy, of course. Now you're gonna bend your two knees and put your two feet on the floor. 
hip distance apart. So open the feet out just like you would in your down dog. Now we do three, three positions here, no flow in between. So hip distance apart, your hips are not that wide. Feet are hip distance apart, you got it. Hands either right beside the hips. So once the hips come up, we bring them together or you can start with your hands up on the floor above the shoulders in Urdhva Dhanrasana. So before we go up, we find that neutral pelvis by pressing into the four corners of the feet. We reach the tailbone towards the feet and you keep that angle in the pelvis as you then inhale and lift the two frontal hip bones up to the ceiling above. One. Using your legs to bring your chest closer to your chin. Two. Three. Four. And lower down, exhale, five. Gonna do two more just like that. In three. In two, reset the foundation, the feet and the hands, keeping neutral pelvis. In one, on the next inhale, lift back up through the front of the body, join palms or lift to the head, reset, and then lift off your head. One. Imagine that block is still between the knees for two. Always keep the soles of the feet on the floor. That's how the feet were designed. So we want to protect the spine on how the feet are used. Take one more deeper breath of breath. And exhale, come down and release. Third set, last set, after which we start to take it easy. Foundation is the feet. The feet supports the pelvis and the spine and the lower back. The hands where you need them at the side of the body or above the shoulders. If you're gonna go to the head, inhale, come up onto the head first. Draw the elbows in so they line with the wrist and then inhale, press and lift up off of the head. For one, if you notice the feet move, then move them back to straight and slightly turned in for two. Three. Almost there. Four. Take one more. And come down as you exhale. Now roll over to the right side. Inhale, sit yourself up, cross your legs, lift up, jump back, take a vinyasa flow, up dog and down dog and return to seated position. Jump through seated position, straight legs, Inhale, hook your big toes outside of the feet or wrap your hands around the soles of the feet. Legs are actively engaged. Exhale, folding forward in space. A slow count of 10. Nine. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three, two, one. 
to. One, we got one more like that. Inhale, sit up. All the way up. Exhale. Now open your legs out at about 90 degrees. When you open your legs, pull the flesh out from the sitting bones. Reset the tip of the sitting bone as the foundation. Inhale. Grab the outsides of the feet. Just blow your pinky toes. And then exhale. Extend your spine forward in space. Same slow count of 10. Nine. Eight. Six. Five. Four. One. Next inhale, help yourself up. Here's the point where you want to put on some clothes to stay warmer and you're going to take your mat against the wall behind you and you're going to take your Viparani Karani legs up the wall. Where's your clothes? You might want to put something on because you're going to cooling the body down, getting it ready for Shavasana. You're better to keep the heat in than to feel a little bit of a chill. Maybe some socks or a sweater. You're lying on your back, legs perpendicular to the floor, resting against something so you can just disengage them. And in that state of awareness, taking three minutes, observing your inner body, calm down. Clock begins.
on an exhale, come down from Viparani Karani to a seated cross-legged half lotus or full lotus position. Arms go around the back, hold the outsides of your elbows. And as you exhale, you forward bend and put your forehead to the floor in front. Hands around the back, hold opposite elbows. There you go, forehead to the floor. Count of 10. Six. Four. Two. On your next inhale, sit up as tall as you can. Hands to the front of the knees, mudra, thumb, and first finger together. Crown of the head reaches up, lower your chin halfway towards your chest. And at this point, you can close your eyes. Taking one minute here, creating and consuming the longest breaths of your practice. Thirty seconds. Inhale, open your eyes. Put your hands on the floor below your shoulders. One last little lift, one last little effort, and then we take rest. So hands down. Inhale, lift up your hips and or your feet. I count down from 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. There it goes. 4. Make sure you breathe. 3, 2, one, exhale, lie down and take your rest. Unless, of course, you need to do another flow, then you lie down and take rest. Six minutes, staying warm. releasing the breath, noticing that intelligence that can breathe for you, releasing the body through the muscles, noticing all the bones settling into the floor, staying awake, aware of what you're doing which is finally relaxing.
Inhale, take a deep breath. Feel the effect you've had on yourself now with your practice. Now wake yourself up by moving your body, arms and legs and hands and feet. Now curl over into a little ball in that fetal position on your right side. Inhale, help yourself back up to a cross-legged position. Let's finish with the sound of Om. Join your hands, lower your chin, close your eyes. Take an inhale. Good work, folks. Thank you for practicing with us today. Have a good week, and we'll see you next week.